Today we're going to be taking a detailed look at two of the new LEGO Star Wars dioramas. We have the Emperor's Throne Room and also the Endor Speeder Chase, both of which are commemorating the 40th anniversary of the Return of the Jedi. In addition to taking a look at these two awesome sets, we're also going to be integrating them into the collection and comparing them with the other LEGO Star Wars dioramas. Starting with the Emperor's Throne Room, it has 807 pieces. Those pieces are divided among five different building stages or bags, and we also get two large pieces of flex TV. Within the first few pages of the instruction manual, there is a write-up about the scene, and it also compares it with the LEGO set. On the side of the box, it says Diorama Collection, and there's Palpatine on his throne. On the back of the box, we can see a classic scene right here, and another one that's actually comparing it with a movie still, and also the dimensions of the set. Starting with the three minifigures included in the set, on the left side here we have Luke Skywalker. He's got some nice print detailing on his torso, but nothing on his legs. He comes with a black hand, a green lightsaber, and a chrome lightsaber hilt. He has an alternate face, I'll show you that in one moment. Then we have Darth Vader. He's got some arm print detailing, so it's one of the better Darth Vaders, and once again that lightsaber there. And then Emperor Palpatine. Luke has a little bit of a concerned look, and then Darth Vader's helmet can be removed to reveal his white head. There's Palpatine's face, and his alternate face is pretty cool too. And it really pairs up nicely with the Sith lightning elements that also come with this set. Pairing these three characters up in a LEGO Star Wars set, that's a pretty awesome minifigure selection if you ask me. However, the set doesn't come with any Imperial Royal Guards, but it doesn't really have a spot for them because it's a smaller diorama that more so focuses on the throne. This set presents very well. It's super clean, nice and compact, and there's some super nice building techniques that were used to create this diorama. It comes with the three printed pieces. So we have the 2x4 LEGO Star Wars tile and also the 2x6 quote tile that says, I am a Jedi like my father before me. And then also this awesome brick right up here, which is the 40th anniversary of the Return of the Jedi brick. So it's actually a panel that's 1x4x3 by by bricks tall and it's topped with a 1x4 tile. Now, if you think it takes away from the set, or from the scene, what you could do is just replace those two jumpers that it sits on, take the 1x4 tile off the top of it and put it there instead. The base construction of this diorama matches all of the other ones. It uses black bricks and tiles, and then there's these grill elements that are snot mounted in spot. This one is quite different from the others though because it's raised up so high, and the substructure underneath is actually hollow, and you can see Palpatine's lightning right there. So yeah, there's actually a little storage spot for Palpatine's lightning, which is convenient. It's just right here, just pop that off, and there you go. On that panel, there's two jumpers. Then we have some nice, evenly distributed stairs. Love the little gaps there and two more jumpers, and Palpatine's chair. So there's lots of different ways to position the minifigures in this set because of those jumpers. Come on, it's not a chair, it is a throne, and it looks magnificent. So many different parts went into this, and it's honestly just such a unique throne. Like, it's just such a good build. I love the purple color in the interior as well. And because Palpatine has a soft cape, he can actually sit in that throne, relaxed and comfortable, as he watches Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker begin their duel. On the left and right hand side, we have these awesome railings that are built using metallic droid arms, and also some dark gray elements, and then these duty posts with the trans blue cheese slopes. Technically, minifigures should be able to sit in those, but uh, at this scale, it's not really necessary, and it's not really part of the scene. I love the windows behind Palpatine. From a builder's perspective, that is the main highlight of this set. This sort of circle framing the throne was an absolute pleasure to build. It uses wedge plates, tiles, 1x2s with a slide, and just all sorts of pieces to create this unique shape. And it just looks so good with like a few exposed studs, some tiles, and different depths. Same with the floor, there's a nice combination of different sizes of tiles, jumpers, plates, and even bricks on their side, and it just adds a really nice texture to this build. But the most pleasing thing from a builder's perspective is actually the window behind the throne there. It is just such an interesting build that you can see when you spin it around here. These windows are all connected to that piece of flex tubing, so they're all at those interesting angles, and the gaps between them are filled in using those sloped grill elements there. And there's actually two different pieces of flex tubing that are connected to the top and bottom of the window, and it just gives it the perfect shape to frame this printed dish element here. This custom printed dish for this set is awesome. And the way it's just floating there is actually crazy. You can see these little pieces right here that are actually holding it in spot on the top and bottom, and it can move freely inside there. 
This whole thing back here was just such an interesting building technique. And there's also another layer of bricks and slopes and technic elements that are nicely tiled off there that sort of keep it all together and give it some structure because you can actually pick it up by this back here because those technic elements do a really good job of reinforcing this whole build. Overall, this is a fantastic set. It comes with so many good print elements, three awesome minifigures and some extraordinary building techniques. And I think it's my new favorite diorama. It just presents so well. With that said, it's suggested retail price is $100. So it is fairly expensive for 807 pieces. I would probably recommend buying it on double points or when there's a good promo or waiting to get it when it's on sale. But I do think it is an extraordinary diorama. So you can't really go wrong with it because it's got some awesome pieces and awesome minifigures and the build experience was awesome. So yeah, there we go. The Lego Star Wars Emperor's Throne Room. Next up, we have the Endor Speeder Chase with 608 pieces. Those pieces are divided among five different bags or building stages, and we also get three large 8x16 nougat plates. The instruction manual isn't quite as compact, and within the first few pages we can learn about the Endor speeder chase. There's a still from the movie and also some behind the scenes shots, which is pretty neat. There's also a storyboard right up here. Some more images from the movie, and then of course a set comparison. I really like this head-on shot on the side of the box. The dimensions are on the back of the box, along with a really nice comparison image right here, and then a different angle of the set. This set comes with three minifigures, Luke, Leia, and also a Scout Trooper. I really enjoy the print detailing on Luke and Leia, and also their helmets. A really interesting mold and three different color combinations. They come with two faces. One's a serious face. You can see Luke has a serious face there, and then one that's just a little bit more casual. There's the alternate faces. I like the print detailing on the back of their torsos, and the Scout Trooper also comes with a headpiece as well. So three decent minifigures. I'm a huge fan of Scout Troopers. I really like their helmets and the print detailing on their body and torso, and this is definitely a good minifig accessory. Essential for the scene is, of course, speeder bikes, and you actually get two of them with this set, and they're a little bit different from one another. This one can actually accommodate two minifigures, so I've got Leia driving there. And her seat is pretty well crafted with those cheat slopes. It does a pretty good job of accommodating her legs. And then uh, we've got Luke right behind her. And he's actually on a hinge element. So there's a slight range of motion there. This is definitely one of the best speeder bikes that I've ever crafted with LEGO. There are so many pieces jammed into this thing to give it the proper shape. I like the color of it as well in the dark tan. It's got like the backrest back here. Some butcher knives on the back to add some nice details. Uh, it's got some foot paddles here that of course can't be you know accessed by minifig legs but the details are there so it's a really nice speeder bike and like I said there are some slight differences between the two this one here can only accommodate one minifigure it's just slightly different in the sense that the back has actually been filled in by a couple tiles whereas this one here has that hinge element there's the scout trooper on his speeder bike and they're ready to be placed within the diorama before I do that let's just have a quick look at some of the details once again, some printed tiles, and the quote is, quick, jam their comm links, center switch, and we also get one of those printed bricks as well. The base construction on this one was much more simplistic. It just uses some black plate, those large nougat 8x16 plates, then some bricks and some tiles, and some of those snot-mounted grill elements. The next layer was a bunch of odd-shaped dark green plate, and also some dark green shield tiles. Scattered throughout, we have various leaf elements and a bunch of those new fern pieces as well, which originated in the Rivendell set. This set comes with 24 of them, and I think this new element is awesome. Another highlight of this set is the very interesting tree builds. I love different tree builds, and these ones were pretty awesome. However, I will say I am missing one of these triangular reddish-brown plates. One tree is slightly taller than the other, but they use the same design concepts. I really like the use of the dinosaur tails on the top of the trees, which support the dark green and olive leaves. You create a tower of these snot elements here, and then you cover that tower with various jumpers, tiles, plates, and slopes. And in the end, you get these really nice looking trees that look like the Endor Forest. Now, how do you attach the speeder bikes? Well, you'll probably see these trans clear pole elements coming out of the ground with those little pieces that usually are used to display minifigures in jumping poses. You just stick those into the new modified 1x3 rounded plates in the bottom of the speeder bikes. And that actually does a really good job of putting the speeder bikes in like an action pose. I love action poses and this just looks awesome. They're at the unique angle, they're the perfect height off the ground and it looks like they're just ripping through the forest. 
The last page of the instruction manual and the box art encourages builders to create their own scene by moving those little fixtures around or removing them entirely. For example, on the side of the box, you can see the speeders side by side, and on the back of the box, you can actually see that they've removed one of the speeders and set up the lightsaber scene. And in fact, both of the dioramas that we're having a look at today encourage that type of play. This set here was 608 pieces, retails for a whopping 80 US dollars. So there's one thing that all of the dioramas have in common. They're all very expensive for what they are. But like I said earlier, I would recommend buying this when it's on sale or when there's a good GWP or during double points. Because let's face the fact, the diorama lineup is pretty cool. They look great. They come with some awesome minifigures, have some interesting building techniques and actually have some awesome printed pieces. However, with that said, I think this one here, the Emperor's Throne Room, absolutely dominates the Endor speeder chase. Here's all six of the LEGO Star Wars dioramas presented together on one display. I think they look fantastic when they're all together. We've got the Dagobah, Jedi Training, the Trench Run, Trash Compactor, the one that started it all, which is Darth Vader's Meditation Chamber, the Endor Speeder Chase, and also the Emperor's Throne Room. Some sacrifices had to be made in order to display these all together, such as the UCS Y-Wing is currently on the floor. But for those of you who regularly watch this channel, you know I'm about to make some massive shelving changes here to the LEGO Room. But I gotta say, they look pretty good right here on the shelves where all my Star Wars sets are, right below the UCS AT-AT Walker. That's really about it for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for some more great stuff. And thank you so much for coming on by. Farewell.